The passion to shoot video, to press record, the passion to just get up there and create something, anything. This is my passion, this is my hobby. I set the camera up, I pop on the right lens and shoot the frame I have in mind. I have no intention to shoot world-class footage. I accept the mistakes I make during the process and just move on. I just want to get out there and shoot raw video, a format that allows me to be the painter, to paint the story that I want to tell. I always tell myself to enjoy the filmmaking process and just have a good time. You get your good days, you get your bad days, you know, the weather may be too overcast, wet or way too sunny, but there is always a story to tell. This is the Canon EOS M. It isn't the perfect camera and that's exactly why I love it. It forces me to practice manual focus, to set my shots up using my own knowledge and thoughts as to what I believe the scene should look like. This camera isn't going to be a workhorse for weddings, for television or for shots that require high resolution in slow motion, but for film hobbyists like myself who like to just get out there, emulate and create the film looks that have inspired us on a budget, then this is why I shoot with the EOS M and Magic Lantern Raw. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my shooting style out in the field with the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern Raw. I'm going to talk about the tips and the tricks. I'm going to talk about the lenses that I'm using and what I would recommend to you guys. And also, how to stabilize in post. You know, this is something that I've been doing for years and a lot of you have been saying, you know, what gimbals did I use in this video or in that video? And the truth is, I didn't use any gimbals. So, I'm going to talk about my process of stabilizing in post and also the settings that I'm currently using with the Canon EOS M to date. So I think these settings are going to be probably the best settings that I've used up until now and I'm going to walk you through those settings. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so first things first is my style of shooting out in the field and I own a couple of Canon EOS M cameras and each one of these, there is not one perfect rig, you know. There is a different style for each of these cameras depending on how you go about setting them up. So first things first, this is a rig build that I did in another video and I built it towards a red cinema digital camera type style. And this thing is used for, you know, documentaries, short films, you know, music videos. And this big grip over here just allows me to keep it close to my chest and just pan around like this with my stabilized lenses. So I love this for handheld work and run and gun. I think this is a perfect rig over here. You have a base plate by Camvate and it's small and tiny. I used to use the small rig one with the 15mm rods but I've replaced it with this Camvate base plate. On the back I've got a small rig monitor mount which allows me to put my uh, phone clamp, my smartphone clamp on the back and then allow me to mount my portable power banks to my Canon EOS M and I can charge for ages. So if I choose to shoot with the continuous raw modes on my Canon EOS M then the power bank is going to save me heaps in getting those extended recording times. Now another handheld rig that I use for run and gun is this guy right here. It's built like the Super 16 type style or the Super 8mm and I absolutely love this guy. I made a video about it and I talked through you know everything that I'm using but essentially it's just a pistol grip, the Canon EOS M50 cage for my Canon EOS M camera. And with this rig I mainly use old vintage glass like these ones right here. And these are sort of cinema style, you know, they've got de-clicked apertures, long focus throws, and when you pair it with the EOS M and the crop video modes, then the vignetting is removed and you're able to shoot with that classic vintage style look. So with this handheld rig here, I just use the neck strap like this and then stretch it out. And this allows me to create that tension, that's nice stabilized footage. And then in Final Cut Pro X, what I do is enable stabilize. You can also do that in DaVinci Resolve. But when I'm shooting scenes that have infinity focus or the majority of the subject is in focus without much shallow depth of field, then the Final Cut Pro X stabilization works absolutely fantastic. I've been using it for three years now and it hasn't skipped a beat. You know, people say, what gimbal did you use? You know, how did you get those smooth handheld shots? So you probably see in the clips, but I just extend my grip like this, my neck strap, and then I use this to pan. I can pan left and right and then I mainly do these tilt pans just like that so I'm emulating you know like a motion cam or something like that. It's cheap, it's cost effective, you don't have to spend $600 or $800 on a gimbal if you don't need to. Gimbals are always fantastic but this is what I find feels comfortable to me. It's just run and gun, plug and play and I love this style of shooting. 
Now also with this rig, I do use a viewfinder and it's a magnetic one, it's LCD V6. If you do have it onto your chest like this, then you might find that you bump it and it might just come off. But for the majority of the time, it works fine. There are definitely better external viewfinders out there for the EOS M, like the Movo or the Zacuto. Those ones are absolutely fine and I can recommend them to you guys as long as they fit the screen. So there you go. That's my Super 16mm rig for the Canon EOS M. All right, so now let's talk about the lenses that I use and what I prefer these days. So C-mount lenses are what I prefer. Uh, if I want something with manual focus, a good fast aperture, and something that's not too expensive. Now, these ones I have in my hand, I got the Apollo Television 50mm f1.9, and this C-mount lens is made for Super 16 cameras. They create softness, aberrations in the trees, and they just help paint that nice old vintage cinema style look. And over here, I've also got the Cosmica 12.5mm f1.9. A lot of people have been asking about this lens and the filter thread is 43mm. So you'll need 43mm to 52mm step up ring or whatever filter you use. And these are just screw mounts where you just twist them on and they are secure. So there you go. Super 16 lens, C-mount glass. They are great in low light because they've got fast apertures uh, depending on which ones you get. But most of them you can acquire for less than 200 bucks with like f1.4, f1.8, f1.9, or even f1.3. So great lenses right over here for that vintage cinema classic look. Now the next lenses that I own are EF mount lenses. So for the Canon EOS M, I'm using a Metabone Speed Booster, EF to EOS M mount. And the reason why I use these lenses are mainly because they are stabilized. You know, the 17 to 55 f2.8 is a fast aperture. And when you put it with a speed booster, it goes to f2, which means you get, you know, more light into your sensor, you get a fast aperture. And the stabilization and overall look of this lens is fantastic. Now, these are the type of lenses that I'll use if I was shooting, you know, documentaries or music videos. That's not to say that you can't use these lenses, uh, but sometimes for those types of shoots, I'd like to keep my footage clean. Now, I do have a big, beefy, chunky Canon 70 to 200 mil. I don't use this often. You know, I know it's an L glass. It's famous. It's got great colors, great sharpness. It's F4, and when you put it with a speed booster, it becomes F2.8 on my EOS M, but it's not a lens that I use that much unless I'm shooting wildlife. So if I'm doing documentaries about, you know, maybe surfing or, you know, wildlife and I want to get that nice zoomed look into my subject with stabilization, then the 70 to 200 will do an absolute fantastic job there. So I'll keep this in handy. And then the 17 to 55 is what I use mostly. All right, last but not least is the settings that I use on my Canon EOS M to shoot Magic Lantern Raw video out in the field. Let's go. All right, so here's my Canon EOS M, and the SD card that I'm using is the SanDisk Extreme Pro, 170 megabytes a second, and it's the 512 gig version. Now, you don't need this capacity. 64 gig, 128 is good enough. Now, Magic Lantern is installed on the SD card. It's not in camera, so if you don't have the SD card, then there will be no Magic Lantern RAW on your Canon EOS M. To install Magic Lantern, you just put the two files and the folder onto this blank SD card, put it into your camera, you update your firmware, and then it will say Magic Lantern is installed. So I'm gonna close that there. And then to power this Canon EOS M, I'm using a GPO PowerVault 3PD power delivery. So it's gonna work with a range of different cameras, smartphones, tablets, whatever. It's a 10,000 milliamp power bank, and it lasts for a really long time. So I'm gonna put that into here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually restore my settings or my configurations and that's just so I can start off with the same build that you will start off with. So I'm going to go over to restore Magic Lantern defaults and in order to do this you need to be into the prefs tab or the wrench. Then you press config options, restore ML2 defaults and this will restart all your settings that you've done. So if you're not happy with what you've set then you can restore your Magic Lantern settings and click restart. All right, so here are the fresh settings from the start, and you can see that you're shooting 14-bit, you have HD 1080p, that's the mode that you're in, shutter speed, your ISO, you also have your Kelvin, your frames per second, how much storage you have, and whether you're shooting AF or MF for manual focus. You can see that the audio levels are here, but I have disabled the audio. Now to enter the Magic Lantern menu, you can hold the set button or the trash can. So hold the trash can down, and you can see I'm in the presets. Now the preset that I use is this one right here. If I'm using monitors, I use centered HDMI 2.5K 
and I'll leave a link in the description where I go through this setting. But the one that I use out in the field when I'm using these vintage lenses is the 2.5K 1 to 1 centered FRTP, which stands for for real time preview. So what you see in your live view is what you're going to get in your recorded files. Without the FRTP modes, then you know, you're going to have a cropped live view where you have to press the info button and check your actual framing, then press the info button again and then start recording. So 2.5K, the high resolution mode is the best with centered FRTP in my opinion. Now once you've set that, it's not set yet. You need to press the menu button just to refresh the registers and just get it thinking. And then there we go. Now first things first, you can see these arrows on the sides here. So to fix them, to get rid of them, you hold the trash can button and then you go over to kill Canon GUI. This is in the display uh, menu and then you enable that. I'm also going to enable LV digit peaking, which stands for live view digit peaking. This is like a false sharpening. You don't get sharpened images in post or anything like that. It doesn't affect your footage. What it does is sharpen the display so you can nail your focus more precisely. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the movie mode. This is where everything happens, the, where the magic takes place. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to set 2.35 to one aspect ratio. Now, because I've set this, I press the menu button just for it to configure itself. And then you can see over here, I've got my information going. So if I press the info button, you can see that I have a 2.35 to one aspect ratio. And to check your resolution, hold down the trash can button and you can see I'm shooting 2.5K. Now, if it's yellow over here, it's showing that I'm shooting 58.3 megabytes a second. And, you know, it's gonna be a bit wavery with its record length. You can maybe record for, you know, three minutes, five minutes, or maybe one minute. Uh, it really depends. If it's red, then you can't record for that long at all. Now, to go into the raw video and change further settings, you can hit the play button and you can change the aspect ratio there as well. And what I set this to is 16 by nine. So over here, this is the ultimate aspect ratio, what you will finally achieve in post. And you can see that 2.35 to one is achieved with that resolution. If I drop the resolution down, you can see the aspect ratio is also changing. So I might want a two to one aspect ratio, which is what I actually shoot with this guy right here. Two to one is around 2.2K raw. And if I press the menu button, I want to be able to record for a really long time. And so with bit depth off, it records 14 bit. So I'm not gonna get lots of record time because 14 bit is a lot. So if I press the bit depth option and select 10 or 12 bit, then I can you know, increase the amount of record time I can get by lowering my bit depth. So select 10 bit and then just reset. Now you're probably thinking, what is this white thing here? You know, it's a bit distracting. And you know, unfortunately that's the best that we've got for a you know, one-to-one -one live view, a real live view that we're seeing. Something that we see here is what we'll get in post. So there you go. It's just a small display, uh, but at least it's what you see. So with that setting, you can actually go to the overlay tabs, go to crop marks here and enable crop marks set to 2.35 to one. And you'll see that it'll bring up a black area. And there you go. You can focus like this. You can change the aperture. And it's all, you know, as you go. This is what I do, this is how I focus. Zoom out, focus in. And with that live view jig peaking, I'm able to get critical focus. So that's my setting. This is what I've got, ratio 235 to one, 10 bit. But when I go into the actual raw video, I can see that the final aspect ratio is what it shows up over here on the top right, two to one. If I want continuous recording, then I can reduce the resolution and I can go down to 16 by nine, which is 1952 by 1080. Now I'm gonna remove crop marks because I don't actually use that when I shoot. And you can see if I press the info button, 16 by nine, this is what it looks like. This is my actual framing. So it is slow, it's low FPS, but it's the best that we've got for this tiny little camera. Now when I'm shooting, this is actually the display that I'm using and I don't need to press the info button to check my framing because it's absolutely perfect here. There's no slow jitterness or anything like that and it's not cropped in so I don't have to press the info button every single time that I'm you know, trying to pan or acquire focus on my subject who is moving constantly. All right, so just to recap the settings, if I press the play button, if I want 16 by nine, which is what I normally shoot with, then I'm shooting 1952 by 1080. If I want two to one aspect ratio or letterbox, then I just increase the resolution 
and achieve 2 to 1. If I want more resolution, then I scroll all the way up to 2.5K and then I get 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio with this high resolution. So if I go back to 16 by 9 or maybe 2 to 1, let's go ahead and hit record. And there you go, you've got a green box. I'm shooting 10-bit. Uh, you can also shoot 12-bit if you want. Uh, but this is what I generally use if I want letterbox and continuous recording. All right, and every time I stop recording, I press the menu button, menu again, and then menu the third time. And that sort of refreshes what my screen sees and it's back to, you know, functional use. If I press the play button, you can see that these are my recorded clips from the past and they are low FPS, they're not fast, quick playback. But these are the clips I recorded the other day. You know, I went to a farm, different locations, and acquired some really cool footage with my C-mount glass. So that's pretty much it. That's my style of shooting out in the field. Hopefully you got something out of this. You know, the lenses, the settings, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.